What up, players? Welcome to the Nasty Soul channel. Today we're vibing on some chill hop music, and we're going to learn three songs by the band. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but they are dope. So with these songs, we're going to learn some cool chord progressions, some really tasty chords, and some nice licks to throw in there as well. And if you want to follow along this lesson with the Interactive tab, check us out on Patreon. Here we go. This chord progression goes A minor, B7 sharp 5, to D with the E in the bass. And it's basically a 1-4-5 in the key of E minor. Um, but what makes it sound so nice is just the tastefulness of the chords. So we start with a normal A minor 7. And I'll use my fingers and grab uh, with my thumb on the low E string and my fingers on the D, G, and B string. So I'll grab it. And then same strings for the B7 sharp 5. And instead of E minor, I'm going to play a D with the E in the bass, and that's going to give it just kind of a floaty feeling. It's basically an E7 sus chord. It'll sound like this. Now my thumb's on the A string, and my finger's on the G, B, and E string. And just to give it some more movement, I'm going to pluck it again without the high E string. Just the A, G, B string. Just like that. So when we solo over it, we're in the key of E minor, so we could play anything in the key of E minor, and I like to play this pentatonic pattern right here at the 12th fret. But what sounds particularly tasteful in this chord progression is to play the pentatonic scale with the 9th degree. And if you're not familiar with that, this is basically what it looks like. And here's the 9th right here, and right here. So I can highlight those notes throughout the progression, and it'll just sound really nice. just to make it a little bit more interesting, let's pick out a nice lick that we can practice over this chord progression. So this lick is going to work only over our B7 chord and lead us into the E minor. And it goes like this. Alright, so let's jam it and see what comes out. For our next song, our chord progression goes from C minor 7 to F minor 9. And the first thing you want to notice is this F minor 9, if I bring my index finger just to the high E string, I have that same chord I played in the last song, the slash chord. And it's just this floaty feeling. So I can actually connect those two, which is what we're going to do in this song. We do our F minor 9, and I can just grab that high E string by bringing my index finger over. And again, just something to add a little bit of movement, a note that works in the chord, uh, just to make it sound a little bit nicer. And what you want to see is, I could play it like this, F minor 9, I could play it like this, uh, E flat with the F in the bass, or I could actually bar my finger around and make that an F minor 9, uh, F minor 9 11, or you could really just call it an F minor 11, just connecting both those things together. And that's all one big chord you could do, or you could break it up. Either one, it's all one big thing. So think about those ideas whenever you're coming up with your chord progression or just any move you want to do with a chord. So we got those two chords so far, C minor 7 to F minor 9. And then after we play that three times, we're going to bring it down to this A flat major 7. And just a nice basic G7 chord. And it's going to sound like this. Awesome. Now to solo over this, we're in the key of C minor. So we can play anything in our C minor key our C minor pentatonic, but just like the last song, let's do the C minor pentatonic with the ninth scale degree. 
and know where that ninth is so you can single it out and just bring in that juice whenever you want to. And on top of that, let's see if we could find that same lick that we learned. And uh, for here, we're gonna put it over the five chord just like we did in the last one, but the five chord in the C of key is G. So we find our pentatonic pattern, where the lick was, and we start from our G note, and we try and figure it out. Okay, so we got our scale and we got our lick. Let's see what we can do with this. Now for our last song, we're also in the key of C minor, but it's got a very different groove, a very different feel. So let's kind of vibe this out. Uh, we're gonna go from C minor to C11, and then we're gonna play this F7 chord. Instead of doing our A flat major seven down here, we're gonna do it with the root on the A string. And so this is a normal A flat major seven chord. But if we take away a ring finger right here and just bar the whole top four strings, that makes it kind of like a suspended uh, major seven chord, which sounds nice. So we're gonna do it like that. And instead of our G7 down here at the third fret, we're gonna bring it up here to the A string root also and make it a seven, a G7 sharp nine. And uh, always with the G7 sharp nine, we can do this move right here. G7 sharp nine, and I could release that pinky and make it a G7 flat nine. And that's just a smooth move to do. So here's our chords, C minor seven, C minor 11, F seven, A flat major seven sus two, and G seven sharp nine to G seven flat nine. Yeah. So that's generally our chords. But it's really cool what they do in this song. It gives it uh, a lot of movement. We slide up to C minor seven. Then I grab that minor 11, and I give my F7. And I bar my pinky just to get this little, make it like an F9 for a moment. So since we're in the same key as we were in the last song, we could do basically the same exact moves in the same area as we did before. So we have our C minor nine pentatonic scale. We have our uh, lick that we do over the G7 chord. And just one more thing to throw in there. Over our C minor chord and, you know, kind of generally in the key of C, we could play a B flat major, uh, we could play a B flat major arpeggio. do it kind of like that and it just sounds pretty nice man so you could always bring that in we could think about that like a lick but a concept also um, yeah so let's vibe this out we got our lick we get our scale and our second lick as well B flat major B flat major arpeggio all right here we go <laughs> Between these three songs, we learn multiple ways to play the same chord. So whenever we're playing a chord progression, we could think about these different variations to spice it up or just bring out some different ideas. So with our minor chord, we could play a basic minor seven chord, like our A minor seven chord, or we could play our A minor nine chord, that would be with the root of the A string up here, and then finally an A minor 11, which is down here with the root on the E string. And we have three different ways to play a dominant seven chord. We could either play it a regular seven chord, like this B7 right here. We could play a B7 sharp five. 
Mm. Or with the root on the A string, we could play a B7 sharp 9. And with our move, we could release our pinky to make it a B7 flat 9. Let's see if we could take these different chord voicings and change up the songs that we already learned. So we'll take the same chords, play different voicings, and see if something different comes out. So with our first song, we go from A minor 7 to B7 sharp 5 to this E minor chord. Now what if I start with a different one? Out of my three options, where did I do the minor 7? So I could either do the minor 9 up here, or the minor 11 down here. So I think I'm going to start with this one, minor 11. And then from there, I have my three options for the B7 chord. I can either do the B7, B7 sharp 5, which was already in the song, or the B7 sharp 9. And I really like the B7 sharp 9 down here because my high note, D, shares the same high note with the A minor 7 before that chord. So that's just really good, uh, really good voice leading right there. And I can just bring it down to an open E minor chord. And then I can go up to that E minor 9 just to add a little bit of movement to that last chord. So let's see how this chord progression sounds now. Let's see if we can give this next song a different vibe. So we go from C minor to F minor 9. Now, uh, if I think about my minor 7 choices, I can do C minor, C minor 11, or C minor 9. And just to give it a real different flavor, let's start with that C minor 9 right there. And maybe I'll keep the F minor 9, but maybe I could add like a movement going up it. So I'm going to go up the C minor scale. Just like that. I'm going to go play my C minor 9, play the two notes leading up to my F minor 9. And that could be my two chord vamp right there. And when I get to my A flat major 7, I can either play uh, the one that was already played, or I can look at my root on the A string and give it that sus feeling. And from there I can go to my G7 sharp 9. Beautiful. Brings out something different. Let's hear what it sounds like. When it comes to soloing, consider some of these ideas to get you out of your box. Play the minor pentatonic with the ninth, or play the major arpeggio down a whole step. So if we're in the key of C minor, play the B flat major arpeggio, and it's just gonna sound nice, it's gonna take you a little bit out of what you may regularly be playing, and it's dope. And if you want more ideas on uh, just concepts to solo and get you out of the box, check out my Neo Soul book. It's got a lot of solo ideas, a lot of chord ideas as well, so you could bring in some extra chord moves, and just really bring your playing to the next level in the neo-soul genre. So definitely check that out, and if you want tabs that go along with everything in this lesson, you can slow it down and learn every lick just right in front of you. Check us out on Patreon. All my Patreon members get access to that, including backing tracks as well, so you can have the backing tracks for each of these songs, jam along with it, try your own variations of the chords, try the soloing, try the licks, try all that jazz. Keep jamming it, baby, and stay nasty.